another country of medium size. And we compared with the United States and Italy, also in Latin America, which is fighting to free itself from the clutches and tentacles that it has been involved by US imperialism um, in that part of the world is Venezuela. Ever since the Bolivarian Revolution, led by the late and much lamented Comrade Hugo Chavez, the Venezuelans have been fighting to make sure that their country's wealth belongs to the Venezuelan people and is used for their benefit and not for the benefit of foreign imperialism. Hugo Chavez is unfortunately no longer with us, but his place has been taken by Nicolas Maduro, and all kinds of attempts have been made to undermine the Venezuelan government, to seek its over, over, overthrow. And I'd like the um, comrade from the embassy, uh, Elena Menendez, to actually take this message from us to the embassy and to the people in government of Venezuela that we, in the Communist Party of Great Britain, Marxist members, support their struggle for independence and for socialism. And we're with you. And with these words, I ask you to say a few words. Thank you. for the invitation. Uh, it's the first time I speak in here and in English, so I, I beg your pardon if I make any mistake, and I hope you can help me for a translation on all these things. <laughs> and if you don't understand if anything I say, please stand up. No? Uh, this is a, the 24 of July, that was yesterday, marks the, another anniversary of the birth of our uh, national hero that was Simon Bolivar, the first liberator of uh, Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Ecuador, Bolivia in the 19th century. That was 200 years ago, a independence struggle, a national struggle, a struggle for liberation from the Spanish Empire in the 19th century. And now, 200 years later, we are also in another kind of struggle against another empire and uh, we need all the solid all the solidarity we can uh, I met, I have to present myself I'm Elena Menendez I'm the press counselor from the Embassy of Venezuela I send you greetings from the ambassador of Venezuela in the United Kingdom which she, she, her name is Rocio Maneiro I come today in her name and well as all of you know Venezuela and the Bolivarian Revolution is uh, having a hard time. Well, from 15 years ago, we have been having a hard time. We were one of the first, of course, along with Cuba, 50 years ago, to, to take the, a step forward for independence against uh, imperialism, United States imperialism, but also from uh, the, uh, the, the enemy within, that was our economical elites that have a very strong tie and bond with the United States and its interests. And well, now in this new <coughs> phase, in this new time after the passing of President Chavez, we have to face a economic warfare that, it's, uh, that basically consists <coughs> in that most of the goods that are produced uh, by the private industry and <coughs> companies have, um, are, are taken away, hidden away in, throughout the country. The government is making a great struggle to, to attack this great problem. And of course, this is a new, a new step in the economic war that's been declared from with, from the outside and within, which mm, has has its main aim to topple the uh, Bolivarian Revolution. Mm, in this case, it, uh, it's a different attempt of a different kind of nature <coughs> because it's not been declared as in the past. For example, we had a coup in 2002 that was very outward. It was declared by its authors and its organizers. And later on in 2002, in December 2002, in January 2003, we had a sabotage, that's how we say, a strike 
sabotage, sabotage, sabotage uh, of the main industry of the country for two months. And well, it was also declared outwardly by its organizers, and so the people were very conscious of what was happening. But now it's a very different kind of uh, aggression because it's not been declared. So the speech of uh, reaction and of fascism within and within outside our country is that uh, what's happening, this phenomenon of scarcity, is, uh, is responsibility of the government. No? We are tackling with a, an attempt to overthrow the government through a tactic that is very similar to that that, that had been applied in 1973 to the Chilean government of Salvador Allende. And well, we are now in the midst of all, in, in the middle of all this, and with elections, parliamentary elections, uh, being held in the 6th of December, the next December. And so we are struggling right now with this uh, acute uh, desestabilization attempt and um, also in, in this context that we are having a very acute uh, penetration of mi paramilitarism uh, forces that come from Colombia and also from within, from Venezuela, of uh, uh, right wing, uh, 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 right wing sections, right wing people, um, and also in the context, a broader context, of uh, the fall of the oil prices. That, well, it, it has to be studied uh, in detail because it also has uh, causes that, tend, that we tend to think that have the aim of <coughs> undermining not only Venezuela but other oil producing countries throughout the world. Despite of all this, the social programs have continued for the people, for the vast majority of the population. <laughs> and um, also, we have to remember the executive order of the 9th of March of the US government that uh, characterized, that's how you say, characterized? Yes. The, the Venezuela has a national threat for the United States. Rocky relations between Washington and Caracas hitting a new low on Monday as the United States declares Venezuela a national security threat. After months of tension, the White House slapping sanctions against seven Venezuelan officials it says are involved in political corruption. U.S. officials say scores of pro-democracy protesters have been killed or tortured in recent months and thousands detained. Jeff Mason is following this story for Reuters at the White House. Uh, the United States is, is eager to show Venezuela and, and other countries that um, are not exactly close friends of Washington that human rights abuses are unacceptable. Whoop. This is what happens when you call the cops. Say what? This is what happens when you call the cops. Come on. This is what happens when you call the cops. You get your rights violated or you all get shot. Pow. This is what happens when you call the cops. Uh. This is what happens when you call the cops. Whoop. This is what happens when you call the cops. You get your rights violated or you all get shot. I'm Bang. sick of people being victimized by criminal cops. Psychopathic predators terrorizing neighborhood blocks. Equipped with pepper spray, mace, cuffs, tasers, and glocks. They like serial killers acting out subliminal. Thoughts. Forget what you taught, these cops have got a license to kill Witness intimidation means that they can use it at will Code of silence means that the pigs will never let out a squeal And if they go to court, they know the judge will make them a deal For real, that's why they stopping me, locking me up and stopping me Confiscating my property, talking in my demography Making the poor commodities, profiting off of poverty Enforcing policy, supporting prison accounts It's quite interesting to see that the United States is, is sort of focusing in on Venezuela uh, at a time when it's restarting diplomatic relations with Cuba. So this basically makes Venezuela sort of the top foe in Latin America now that Cuba has moved out of that spot. Venezuela accuses the U.S. of plotting a coup against socialist President Nicolas Maduro, a charge the U.S. denies. Last week, Caracas told the U.S. it has 15 days to cut its embassy staff from 100 to 17. This executive order is very important if you have an occasion to read it because it's not just a sanction against some uh, 
public uh, service uh, people of the uh, Venezuelan government, no, or public servants of the Venezuelan government, but it has the potential of becoming a blockade in the months or years to come, because it depends on the opinion of high uh, public uh, servants of uh, the USA government that they can declare that any people that has been related or will be related to the Venezuelan government pose a national threat to the United States. So it's important that if you can uh, read the degree and study it, because it's potentially a sketch for a future embargo, you know, an aggression to end. It's say potential aggression. Well, it's an aggression, but it can be extended in the future. So in, the, in this context of the fall of the oil prices, of the, the, this, the executive order, and also the economic warfare we are confronting right now, the elections will take place the 6th of December. As always, uh, things are difficult in revolution, and we uh, hope to overcome. I don't know if this phrase sounds to you, but well, we will overcome, because that's our, that's our will, that's the commitment of the majority of people. We have a, a lot of support from Latin America. Uh, there are a lot of uh, transnational uh, organization and institutions that have been created in the past years to preserve the independence of Latin America and the will of its people through government. That's one of the main, how do you say that? Heritage and herencias, legados. Legacies. Legacies of President Hugo Chavez. And, well, um, we hope to overcome in this opportunity to overcome this new aggression of uh, U.S. imperialism that has this very long uh, history of uh, trying to intervene in Latin American countries, especially always when they have progressive or leftist governments that seek the, the well-being of its people. And well, we hope that we can have more solidarity and, or a continuing solida solidarity from from the the <coughs> parties that understand and the people that understand what's happening in Venezuela. And well, we, I'm open to any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Elena, for that mentioning the Chilean coup and the American hand, hand in it. But that's one 9-11 that the American coup problem never knows.